When we talk about table tennis players from China back in 2000s era, three names come to my mind. Wang Lichin, Malin and Wang Hao. Anyone who is familiar with table tennis knows who these three legends are. They've won everything. Well, almost everything. Before we get into this video, I just want to say that I'm so happy and grateful that this channel has over 2000 subscribers and people in general who like to comment on these types of videos. As for my inactivity lately, I had a lot of studying to do, so I'm sorry, but here we are again, ready for more table tennis talks. Today's topic is the triangle of the three most dominant Chinese table tennis players from the 2000s era and how they prevented each other from becoming Grand Slam champions. Quick note, as I mentioned in my first video, a Grand Slam is a feat that only few players managed to accomplish. In order to become a Grand Slam champion, you need to win World Cup, Olympic Games and World Championships. In the late 90s and early 2000s, great players such as Liu Guliang, Janowi Walner and Kong Linghui started to retire one by one. It is only natural for the next generation to step up. Players such as Werner Schlager, Vladimir Samsonov, Jose Huck and of course Timo Boll really made an impact in the 2000s era. But there were three players that were feared the most back in 2000s. Between the year of 2000 and 2010, Wang Lichin, Ma Lin and Wang Hao combined for 12 out of the 19 major tournaments. And those are World Championships, World Cups and Olympic Games, of course. That means that they had to be Grand Slam champions, right? No, interestingly, bad luck, choking and better day for the player across the table, all these factors contributed to the fact that these three legends are not Grand Slam champions. Let's look back on how it all happened. Our timeline goes way back into the year of 1999 in Eindhoven, Netherlands. By defeating Vladimir Samsonov, Kim Tak So and Janovi Walner, Malin found himself in the finals of the World Championships at the age of just 19. Across the table was highly motivated Liu Guliang, who was chasing for gold in order to become a Grand Slam champion himself. After a five-set thriller, Liu Guliang, who was more experienced, prevailed. The very next year, Ma Lin and Wang Lichin met each other at the semi-final stage of the 2000 World Cup in Yangzhou. Ma Lin defeated Wang Lichin three games to nil, and then went on to sweep Kim Tak So three games to nil as well, thus winning his first ever World Cup title. This was the first time that two out of our three protagonists met each other on the biggest stage. We now go to the year of 2001, Osaka, Japan, World Championships. Wang Lichin defeated Jorgen Persson, Kim Tak So and Chiang Penglung on the way to reach his first ever World Championships finals. On the other side, Malin defeated Jörg Roskopf and Liu Guzeng before he was stopped at the semi-final stage by his more experienced friend Kong Linghui. Kong defeated Malin three games to one. In the finals, that same experience Kong relied so seemed as the recipe for another victory. At the 2001 World Cup, Wang Lichin wanted to continue his win streak. He managed to defeat Werner Schlager in the quarterfinals. In the semifinals, he was ready to face the winner between Malin and Jörg Roskopf. Jörg managed to get his revenge on Malin before losing to Wang Lichin in the semifinals. All was set for Wang Lichin to win two biggest titles in the same year. However, across the table was highly motivated Vladimir Samsonov, who played one of the best matches of his career. He defeated Wang Lichin in four straight sets, winning his second World Cup title in the past three years. 2002 World Cup in Yinan was a disaster for both Wang Lichin and Malin. 
They both lost their quarterfinal matches. Defending champ Malin lost to Croatian vet Zoran Primorac, while Wang Lichin lost to the eventual champion Timo Ball. Disaster would continue for the promising Chinese duo as they both lost in the quarterfinal stage of the 2003 World Championships in Paris. Malin lost against each other on the biggest stage was at the 2003 World Cup in Yangjin. In the semi-finals, Wang Lichin seeked revenge on Malin because two years ago he lost against his compatriot and rival at the same semi-final stage of a World Cup. As luck would have it, their meeting would be a rerun as Malin defeated Wang Lichin again, this time 4 games to 1. Malin went on to win his second World Cup title while Wang Lichin settled for a third place. Still, in the shadows of these two giants, Wang Hao was lurking, waiting for his time to come. At that same World Cup, he lost in the quarterfinals to the former world number one Jean-Michel Save in an epic seven-game thriller. The Olympic Games Probably the biggest reason why it is so hard to achieve a Grand Slam. Simply because they occur every four years, so you basically have three or maybe four shots at the title. Malin, Wang Lichin and Wang Hao were all competing in Athens. First one to go out was Malin. In a demonstration of greatness and evergreen abilities, Janovi Walner defeated Malin four games to one in their round of 16 encounter. This was prime Malin versus past prime of Waldner. One of the better table tennis matches I've seen. Two legends now remain, Wang Lichin and Wang Hao. They met each other for the first time on the biggest international stage at the semi-final stage of the Olympic Games. Battle of the Wangs, if you will. All jokes aside, Wang Hao looked more comfortable and motivated that day. He defeated Wang Lichin 4 games to 1 to book a place in the finals of Olympic Games. Wang Lichin managed to defeat Walner in a third place match, thus securing a bronze medal. In the finals, however, it would not be a player from China who would celebrate. Extremely interesting and nail-biting match resulted in a 6 game victory for the Korean penhold master. Back in 2004 in Hangzhou, Malin defended his World Cup title from the year before. This time he would defeat Wang Hao in the semi-final match. This was the first time these two met at the big international stage. Malin showed no mercy as he quickly dismantled Wang Hao four games to nil. He would go on to defeat Kreanga again, just like a year ago, to win his third World Cup title. 2005 World Championships in Shanghai had some of the most memorable matches, such as Oh Sengun vs Peter Carlson, Timo Ball vs Liu Guzeng, Walner vs Samsonov, as well as Michael Mays' Dream Run. Wang Hao was stunned in the round of 16 as Michael Mays started to lob his way out of every point he was about to lose. As the result of that and the lack of preparations for this type of gameplay, Maze won in 4 straight games. Wang Hao would get his revenge by Ma Lin who defeated Maze in the semi-final stage. On the other hand, there was Wang Lichin, ready to get back to his throne from 2001. Their final match had some great rallies, and in one moment it seemed as Malin had total control of the game as he stepped up to take the 2-1 lead. However, Wang Lichin stayed focused and cool, winning the 4th and 5th games 11 points to 9, causing Malin to lose focus in the 6th game, which would result in Wang Lichin winning his second World Table Tennis Championships title. 2005 World Cup was owned by Timo Ball. First, he defeated Wang Lichin in the quarterfinals, then he would go on to defeat Ma Lin in the semifinals, and after that, he would win his second World Cup title by defeating Wang Hao. Very next year in Paris, all three musketeers from China would end up at the medal podium. In the semi-final match of the 2006 World Cup, Ma Lin would go on to get his revenge on Wang Lichin by defeating him in four straight sets. He would then go on to win his fourth World Cup title by defeating Wang Hao in the finals. 
year of 2007 is where I would like to make a quick stop so we can count their titles so far. Wang Lichin had two World Championship titles at that point, Malin had four World Cup titles, and Wang Hao didn't have any titles at that point that are needed for Grand Slam. In the next three years, we will notice a passing of a torch, if you will. Now, with that big introduction of the 2007, we are going to Zagreb for the World Championships. Malin and Wang Hao met each other in the semi-finals. Again, as well as in the last two World Cups they played each other, Malin was victorious. Speaking of repetitions, Malin and Wang Lichin had their second consecutive World Championships finals battle. Malin looked so hungry for revenge, he quickly jumped to a 3-1 lead. In the fifth game, Malin had a lead of 7 points to 2. Four points were separating Malin from becoming a world champion. I will leave a link in the description to my other video that revolves around biggest table tennis comebacks in history. And this one is certainly one of them, if not the biggest comeback ever. Wang Lichin won the next three games, thus becoming the world champion for the third time. 2007 was the last time that Wang Lichin would win a World Championship title, as well as he would appear at the World Cup stage. As for Malin, 2007 was the last year that he would be playing in the finals of a World Championships, as well as the last time he would, just like Wang Lichin, appear at the World Cup stage. However, that same year of 2007 would be a great year for Wang Hao, as he would go on to win his first ever World Cup title. Wang Hao defeated Ryu Sung Min in the finals 4 games to nil. That would be a revenge for that hard loss from the 2004 Olympic Games, as well as revenge for his compatriots Malin and Wang Lichin, who Ryu Sung Min defeated in the quarter and semi-finals of that same World Cup. Olympic Games 2008, City of Beijing. Objectively speaking, the pressure was extremely high for all three players. Let's be clear, Malin just brutally lost the title in Zagreb, Wang Lichin couldn't seem to win World Cup title and he was getting older, and Wang Hao still remembers his 2004 finals loss at the Olympic Games to Ryu Sung Min. Malin met Wang Lichin in the semi-final stage. Just as Wang Lichin didn't allow Malin to win a world championship title, Malin didn't allow Wang Lichin a Olympic gold medal. He would defeat Wang Lichin in the semi-final stage in 6 games. On the other side, Wang Hao had just defeated Jorgen Persson in the semi-final stage 4 games to 1. World number 1 Wang Hao versus world number 2 Malin. Reverse penhold versus reverse penhold. Everything was set. After 5 thrilling games, it was Ma Lin who prevailed, winning the 2008 Olympic Games gold medal. Wang Lichin had to settle for bronze as he defeated another Swede just like 4 years ago, this time Jorgen Persson. Olympic Games in Beijing would be the last time Wang Lichin competed, as in the 2012 Olympic Games, new generations were emerging, such as Zhang Jike, Ma Long and Xu Xin. Sadness from a tough loss in Beijing was slightly toned down as Wang Hao won his second straight World Cup title in Liege by defeating Timo Ball in the finals. The biggest show of passing of the torch could be seen at the 2009 World Championships in Yokohama. Wang Lichin would, for the third time in a row, defeat Ma Lin at the World Championship stage, this time in a 7-game semi-final battle. Wang Lichin was looking to obtain a three-peat, or should we say to win three world championship titles in a row. However, this is where our passing of the torch story comes to screen. Wang Hao, by defeating Young Dragon Malong, would book his first ever world championships final ticket. Wang Lichin and Wang Hao would play for the first time at the world championship stage. After four games, it was clear, a new era had begun. Wang Hao was world champion. 
We will skip the 2009 World Cup as neither Wang Lichin, Malin nor Wang Hao played that year. 2009 was the last year Wang Lichin, Malin and Wang Hao would play against each other. As we go into the 2010 World Cup in Magdeburg, we can notice a pattern. Wang Hao is dominating. By defeating Timo Boll in the semi-finals and up-and-coming compatriot Zhang Jike in the finals, Wang Hao won his third World Cup title. All that was left for him was Olympic Games. 2011 World Championships in Rotterdam was a turning point for many Chinese players. Wang Lichin played his last World Championships match as he lost to the eventual champion Zhang Jike in the quarterfinals. Ma Lin would play his last good match against Ma Long in the quarterfinals, losing 4 games to 1, and Wang Hao would try to repeat his Yokohama success from 2 years earlier. In the finals, he would meet Zhang Jike, whom he defeated a year ago to win his third World Cup title. Sadly for Wang Hao, back then, Zhang was almost invincible. In an epic six-game match, Zhang Jike won his first ever World Championship title. That finals loss would become the beginning of Wang Hao's agony known as Zhang Jike. That same year, at the World Cup in Paris, these two would meet in the final stage again. Wang Hao looked sharp as he won first two games, but then Zhang cracked a formula that would give him the next four games and his first ever World Cup title. By the end of 2011, we had a new rivalry. Two players who only lack Olympic gold, Zhang Jike, who in a span of just a few months won World Championships and World Cup, and Wang Hao, who won three World Cups as well as World Championships in 2009. There it is, my fellow table tennis fans. End of our long story. 2012 Olympic Games in London. Wang Hao was in a race with Ma Lin and Wang Lichin for a Grand Slam. They retired leaving Wang Hao to battle with Zhang Jike for that same achievement. As luck and destiny would have it, Wang Hao and Zhang Jike would meet each other for the finals of 2012 Olympic Games. I'm not going to lie, Wang Hao was the first player I watched on TV back at the 2008 Olympic Games in Beijing. His match against Ma Lin was the reason I started playing table tennis. I was his big fan. Watching that match in 2012 was devastating for me, because I knew that every story has to end, and just like Ma Lin's and Wang Lichin's, Wang Hao's ended without a grand slam. Zhang Jike played extraordinary, incredibly, a beautiful playstyle for all table tennis fans to watch. In only 455 days, he managed to win a Grand Slam. A record that will probably hold for many years to come. Wang Hao made one last stand next year in Paris at the World Championship stage, where he would lose to Zhang Jike for the fourth time in a row. With a silver medal from 2013, our story of three Chinese giants ends. When we look back in time, these three players played each other 13 times, with a noticeable pattern of Wang Lichin's World Championships dominance and Wang Hao's and Ma Lin's World Cup dominance. These three legends continued China's dominance previously set by Liu Guliang, Kong Linghui and Wang Tao back in the 90s. It was a privilege to watch these great players compete and push each other to the limits. Even though they did not win a Grand Slam, that doesn't take anything from their incredible and respective careers. As luck would have it, they prevented each other from winning it all. All except our hearts. Heart of every table tennis fan. I would like to thank you for watching this video and I hope that in the near future I can continue uploading table tennis content more often. I am taking a bar exam in a half a year, so it will be a challenge to keep up, but with such a beautiful sport at hand, I will find some way to stay active. I would like to know in the comment section who was your favorite table tennis player from the 2000s era and why. If you like this video guys, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel and Patreon. And as always, thank you for your time and see you soon.
Goodbye.